So, in this lecture I will be talking about convolution and again um, this is one of the tools that we will use just like FGF to uh, sometimes uh, compute um, the distribution function and the density function for uh, different kinds of uh, random variables or the functions of random variables. Mostly the <coughs> convolution is used for uh, com computing the um, uh, distribution function of sums of random variables. Okay. So, here um, the definition says that if x and y are independent random variables, the distribution function of x plus y is said to be the convolution of the distribution functions of x and y. Okay. So, uh, the distribution function that we obtain for x plus y is will be uh, uh, is called the convolution of the distribution functions of x and y. Now, if I, if I let f of x plus y, f x and f y denote the distribution functions of x plus y, x and y respectively. right? So, by notation it is clear that uh, the f x plus y is the distribution function for x plus y and uh, f x is for uh, x and f y is for capital Y. Right? Now, uh, for the discrete case, the definition would uh, be as follows. So, uh, when the x and y both are discrete random variables and they are independent random variables, uh, p of x and p of y denote the p m f of uh, x and y respectively. Then uh, p of x plus y equal to t, we will write as summation of p x x. So, you fix the value of capital X, then the y will take the values t minus x. right? And of course, the summation will be over all uh, x for which your uh, this probability is uh, positive and also it should be such that t minus x the probability y at t minus x is also positive. Otherwise, since it is a product of these two probabilities, whenever one of them is 0, the whole uh, the contribution of the uh, uh, that particular term will be 0. So, a simple definition, but we will see how we can uh, apply these uh, definition. And similarly, for the case when uh, for the continuous case, that means when both x and y are independent continuous random variables, uh, that let t denote the sum of the two random variables, that is t is equal to x plus y, then uh, your uh, distribution function for t uh, at small t is probability capital T less than or equal to t. And uh, this we can write as minus infinity to infinity probability x plus y less than or equal to t conditioned at x equal to x just as here we chose the value of x and then the corresponding value of y got fixed at t minus x. <coughs> so, here you condition it on uh, x equal to x and then uh, probability x plus y less than or equal to t. So, then that into that means, this is the uh, distribution function into the probability that x takes the value well the uh, uh, p d f of uh, uh, x at small x. So, which will be capital f of capital x x into d x and uh, your x can vary from minus infinity to infinity. So, this is a general expression and of course, it will depend on uh, your the, the range will de depend on the uh, on the values that uh, your random variables take. Okay. So, I have used the uh, concept of conditional distribution here and uh, so, this is the expression and uh, therefore, in terms of f f f y capital F y and small f x, you can write this as minus infinity to infinity probability x plus y less than t conditioned on x equal to x into f x x d x. So, this we can write as f y uh, integration of minus infinity to t minus x of f y y into f x x d x upon f y x. And then this we can do because x and y are independent. That means, the probability x plus y less than t conditioned on x equal to x, I am able to write break it up into f y y into f x x upon f x x d y. And so, um, uh, because x and y are independent and then into f x x d x. So, your f x x cancels out and we are left with the integration minus infinity to infinity 
uh, in, in again integration minus infinity to t minus x f y d y f x d x. So, therefore, the first part I can write the, I mean the integral minus infinity to t minus x f y d y I can write as probability y less than or equal to t minus x. So, the whole integral is then minus infinity to infinity probability y less than or equal to t minus x into f x x d x. So, I hope there is no uh, uh, doubt about going from here to here, right? because when x is equal to x, your y will be required to be less than or equal to t minus x. And so, that is why I have written this probability as a capital F y t minus x into this. Right? Now, differentiate with respect to t, since the limits are independent of your t, therefore, the uh, differentiation will just go inside. So, therefore, uh, this will become small f t t and this will be equal to. So, only this thing gets differentiated, this is a function of t and therefore, uh, it will be uh, uh, p d f of y at t minus x and then the integral from minus infinity to infinity of uh, 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 this function, product of these two. Right. So, this will be your uh, convolution. You can either write it uh, in this form or you can write it in terms of the p d f's. Okay. Um, and of course, the understanding is that wherever you know for all values of t for which this is defined and you also take the values of x for which this is defined. Right. Now, let, let us so uh, the basic definition is this and then we will just see how we apply it to different cases and of course, um, there will be repetition in the sense that for some uh, for sums of independent random variables um, in quite a few cases by other methods uh, by using the transformation method or by the uh, moment generating function. We have already obtained the um, uh, density functions for the sums of independent random variables, but here I just want to show you the working of this particular method and therefore, we will just go through a few examples. Uh, now, suppose x 1 is uh, Poisson lambda 1 and x 2 is Poisson lambda 2. So, then t is the sum of the two Poisson random variables and uh, now you want to find out probability t equal to n. So, then uh, if I choose x 1 is equal to x, then x varies from 0 to n and this will be uh, probability x 1 equal to x into probability x 2 equal to n minus x. Right? See from here, if this is n, I fix x 1 at x, then x 2 will be n minus x. So, you just sum and now, um, since they are independent and therefore, I have written it this way product of the probability. So, now this particular probability can be written as e raise to minus lambda 1 and we have missed out on the uh, yeah, the summation should have been there. Sorry, summation x varying from 0 to n, right? e raise to minus lambda 1. So, this probability is e raise to minus lambda 1, lambda 1 raise to x upon x factorial and this probability would be e raise to minus lambda 2, lambda 2 raise to n minus x upon n minus x factorial. And so, here also summation x varying from 0 to um, n. Right. Now, uh, then just rearrange the terms e raise to minus of lambda 1 plus lambda 2, then I have divided and multiplied by n factorial. So, this is n factorial and then here it will be um, n factorial divided by x factorial and minus x factorial and then you have lambda 1 raise to x and lambda 2 raise to n minus x. Now, this is the you can see that this is the expansion of the uh, uh, binomial expansion of lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raised to n, because you are summing. See, this thing is independent of x uh, e raised to minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 divided by n factorial. So, this I take outside and then uh, the summation uh, x, x from 0 to n of this will be your lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raised to n. And so, this will be now Poisson with the parameter lambda 1 plus lambda 2, right. This is uh, probability t equal to n. So, therefore, e raise to minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 divided by n factorial into lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raised to n. Right. So, you can immediately uh, conclude that this is now Poisson with parameter lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Yeah. So, another example, I uh, want you to uh, show that x 1 plus x 2 plus x n is negative binomial. Uh, and so, here now we are extending this uh, concept to more than 2, 
more, sum of more than two independent random variables, where x i's are um, actually I could have straight away said that x i are independently identically distributed um, geometric random variables and uh, geometric random variables with uh, probability of success as p. So, that means probability x i Oh, uh, that means the probability. Okay, this is just a uh, geometric random variable, and so um, uh, and the probability of success is one. That's it. When you describe a geometric random variable, you just need uh, to know uh, the probability of success, and then you want to find the uh, probability that uh, you will get a success in n trials. So uh, now here uh, we first consider the sum of two random var two, uh, of the two random variables x one plus x two. And so, probability x 1 plus x 2 equal to n by convolution we will write as x equal to 1 to n minus 1, because there should be I mean I cannot make uh, this 0, I cannot have x going from 1 to n, because in that case when x is equal to n this will be 0. And so, anyway this will be not defined or the probability we will write it as 0. So, there will be no contribution to this sum. So, I have to take the summation from uh, 1 to n minus 1 right. And then if I fix x 1 at x that means for the first geometric random variable, the uh, success, the first success occurs for x trials, then for the second one, the first success will occur at, uh, at the n minus x trial, right. So, the probability of x 1 equal to x is 1 minus p raise to x minus 1 into p, right. At the x th trial, the success must occur, otherwise before that all failures. And similarly, here it will be 1 minus p raised to n minus x minus 1 into p. So, uh, when you um, rearrange the terms here, see x minus 1 and this is minus x. So, x minus x cancels out, you are left with n minus 2 and this is p square. So, this is equal to sigma x varying from 1 to n minus 1, 1 minus p raised to n minus 2 p square, but you see um, x is not present here. Therefore, uh, you just uh, add up these terms n minus 1 times. So, this is n minus 1 into 1 minus p raise to n minus 2 p square. Now, this you can see is the probability that out of um, n successes, uh, out of sorry, out of n trials, uh, 2 are successes and n minus 2 are failures. So, that means, this is the probability of uh, 2 successes in n trials, right, where the, uh, for the last success occurs, uh, where the uh, second success occurs at the end. So, when the um, one success can occur anywhere in the n minus 1 trials. So, therefore, this is n minus 1 1, you can write this as n minus 1 1, choose 1 and then 1 minus p raise to n minus 2 and p square. So, one success occurs anywhere in the n minus 1 trials and then one su success occurs at the end and therefore, this is probability of two successes in n trials. So, therefore, uh, x 1 plus x 2, if you let y be equal to x 1 plus x 2, we have shown that y is negative binomial with the parameters 2 comma p, right. The probability of success is p. Here in the example, I probably did not really mention, but it is understood that uh, probability um, that uh, uh, probability that x i is equal to, uh, okay, the probability of success, sorry. I should say that uh, uh, probability of success is equal to p. I should have mentioned that here. Uh, so, it is understood anyway, right. Now, we can iteratively show that if you now consider the um, random variable y plus x 3, then by the same argument, we will be able to show that this is a negative binomial 3 comma p and so on. So, therefore, um, you can uh, show that uh, this will be negative binomial uh, when x i is a geometric random variable, when each x i is a geometric random variable for all i and x i's are independent. In the, in the example, uh, where we consider the sum of the uh, geometric independent geometric random variables all with uh, probability of success as p, then uh, you see x i was the number of trials required for a success, for one success. Therefore, uh, see uh, if the corresponding number is n i, that means the number of trials required for one success for the ith geometric random variable. So, then uh, you see uh, when you say x 1 plus x 2, this will be the number of trials required for two successes, right. And that number will be then n 1 plus n 2. So, essentially when I wrote that 
uh, the sum x 1 plus x 2 is uh, 2 comma p negative binomial. So, that the understanding is that uh, you want two successes and therefore, the number of trials will of course, will be uh, equal to n 1 plus n 2. Then, so therefore, uh, finally, when you uh, go on uh, doing iteratively this uh, uh, procedure of uh, you know adding on or convoluting these random variables, then uh, x 1 plus x 2 plus x n will finally, give you the number of trials required for n successes. right? And therefore, this was negative binomial n p right? and the total number of successes uh, uh, trials required would be n 1 plus n 2 plus n n. Right? Now, uh, the next part was that uh, without any calculation, you can also conclude. See, this was just to show you uh, how you would apply uh, convolution. And now, here uh, we can also, because by just by description, because uh, when you say x 1 plus x 2 plus x n, that means, you are asking for uh, n successes and your success probability of success is p and therefore, uh, x 1 plus x 2 plus x n gives you the number of trials required for uh, n successes, when the probability of success is p. So, just by uh, uh, saying it aloud, you know, since each x 1, x 2, x n uh, is the is uh, is geometric random variable independent. Therefore, when you add up, you can say that uh, this will be a negative binomial n comma p. So, that is all, so, just to um, because here you really did not re require to uh, use uh, convolution. right? Now, uh, let us consider uh, ag again apply convolution to some of independent uniform random variables, both are 0 1. Right? Now, uh, so, um, therefore, the uh, corresponding uh, p d f s will all be both be 1 as long as x and y are between 0 and 1 and it will be 0 otherwise. right? So, let us define the random variable t equal to x plus y. Now, the thing is that you see we will have to and this is where the um, uh, this part comes that sometimes of course, you can easily determine the ranges, but sometimes it may not be that easy. So, here for example, you see when I write the formula f x x x and f y t minus x. Now, you see this is defined only for uh, between 0 and 1. So, my t minus x also should vary between 0 and 1 and therefore, um, I have to get this I have to write I mean I have to do this computation for uh, first for t between 0 and 1, because t minus x greater than 0 implies that uh, x is less than or equal to t. See from here, uh, this is not defined for uh, t minus x uh, being negative. So, therefore, t minus x has to be non negative, which requires that your t should be greater than or equal to t, right, uh, uh, greater than or equal to x. And then also t minus x should be less than or equal to 1. So, you cannot take a value of, uh, and therefore, t must be less than or equal to from here, t must be less than or equal to 1 plus x. Since, x can take uh, 0 value, therefore, you see immediately from here that your t cannot uh, be more than 1. So, uh, here we will have to, the, the way we are defining this, it will have to be, uh, uh, the limits for t would have to be from 0 to 1. right? And then, your x can vary from 0 to 1, uh, when you uh, right now, I mean, uh, I am writing the integral this way. But, since uh, uh, for x non negative and x between 0 and 1, uh, this is 1. So, therefore, uh, this will reduce to simply integral 0 to t f t minus x d x. Now, when I say that uh, my x varies from 0 to t, so this is also defined and therefore, this is also equal to 1. right? As long as x is varying from 0 to t, this is well defined and it is within the range of the uh, values for y and therefore, uh, this also is 1 and so this integral uh, comes out to be t and t between 0 and 1. So, this is what I have drawn you for you the curve yeah this value is this value is also 1 right. So, um, so therefore, the uh, p d f for the um, sum of the two random variables when both are uniform will be given by this. Now, uh, because x plus y and both can take values between 0 and 1. So, of course, the range for this is uh, this is from 0 to 2. Right. And so, we have to uh, consider the values of t lying between 1 and 2. And uh, in this case, you see again uh, the convolution formula is this. So, t minus x less than or equal to 1 will imply that your x is greater than or equal to t minus 1. So, here immediately you see that t must be greater than or equal to 1 right? or x is greater than or equal to t minus 1. So, uh, that is why the range t greater than or equal to 1 right? and then of course, it cannot go beyond 2. 
so, uh, yes. Yeah, so, therefore, again the same reasoning that uh, this value is 1 in the valid uh, portion uh, region where you can define this. And uh, why am I writing? So, this is t minus 1 to 1. That means, my x can vary from t minus 1 to 1. So, t minus 1, yes. So, this thing you see uh, at t minus 1, this will be 1, because t minus t plus 1. And when this x is 1, this will be t minus 1, because your x can no, x has to be greater than or equal to t minus 1. So, therefore, uh, the range is this and again in this range, uh, this function is equal to 1. So, the integral is t minus 1 to 1, 1 into d x, which comes out to be 2 minus t and that will be your uh, this uh, the graph will be uh, the function will be represented by this straight line. So, therefore, uh, the uh, the uh, sum of the two random uniform random variables, both independent and uh, defined on 0 1, uh, the, uh, the p d f is a triangular distribution. Okay. Yes. So, therefore, you see here uh, you could not have just straight away uh, done this integration from 0 to 2, so that means you could not have allowed t to vary from 0 to 2, because that would not have given you the uh, valid answer. And here you had to break up the uh, region of integration from 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2. And uh, I suppose, yeah, because we are writing t minus x, so we have to uh, do it this way that it uh, x has to be greater than or equal to t minus 1 and we are integrating with respect to x. So, x cannot go beyond 1, therefore, this will be t minus 1 to 1, right. Okay. Yeah. So, another example is now sum of two independent gamma random variables. So, suppose x is gamma s comma lambda and y is gamma t comma lambda, then um, and x and y are independent. So, we have to obtain the p d f of x plus y. Uh, so, define t as uh, x plus y and then by the convolution formula uh, f t a we will write as this. Now, here again we have to uh, apply the same thing, because uh, a gamma p d f is defined only for non negative variables. So, therefore, uh, this has to be a minus x has to be non negative. So, therefore, uh, this give, uh, a minus x non negative this implies x less than or equal to a. Yes. And so, uh, I can uh, that means here my uh, integration has to be from 0 to a. Now, why am I writing this as, yeah, okay. So, right now I am I will you know write down uh, write the correct uh, range, uh, but we are just right now substituting for uh, f x x, which will be lambda e raise to minus lambda x and lambda x raise to s minus 1 because x is uh, s comma lambda, gamma s comma lambda. So, the p d f is lambda e raise to minus lambda x into lambda x raise to s minus 1 and this is uh, p d f for um, y is lambda e raise to minus lambda of a minus x into lambda of a minus x raise to t minus 1. You see as we said x has to be less than or equal to a and now if you, so therefore, this infinity will uh, get replaced by a and you see here uh, e raise to minus lambda x, then e raise to plus lambda x that will cancel out, you will be left with e raise to minus lambda a and then here it is uh, lambda x raise to s minus 1. So, if you just <coughs> take out the lambda here, it will be lambda raise to s minus 1 and this will be ram lambda raise to t minus 1 and you have lambda square here. So, the whole thing will be lambda raise to s plus t minus, uh, because this is uh, 2 and this is minus 2. So, you have lambda raise to s plus t right? and that is what we have written uh, here. So, this is um, lambda raise to s plus t e raise to minus lambda a and then you are left with x raise to s minus 1 and a minus x raise to t minus 1 d x. Now, make the substitution that x upon a is equal to z. So, this will imply that your d x gets replaced by a d z right? and your uh, range goes from 0 to 1 instead of 0 to a because x by a we have put a z. So, range for z will be from 0 to 1. So, therefore, uh, the uh, constant terms I have put outside and uh, so, this a comes from here and then you have this in this. Now, you see this looks familiar and this is uh, the beta function and so, for the, uh, since uh, we want to. Uh, so, therefore, uh, we know that this integral from 0 to 1 d z will be equal to gamma s into gamma t upon gamma s plus t. Right. 
So, from the definition of the beta distribution, we know that this integral must be equal to gamma s into gamma t upon gamma s plus t. And therefore, um, uh, I replace this whole thing by uh, this thing. So, then gamma s gamma t cancel out, you are left with the gamma s plus t and uh, this is uh, lambda raised. So, the lambda we write outside here and then it will be lambda a raised to uh, yeah. So, this makes it s plus t minus 1. So, therefore, lambda a s plus t minus 1, 1 lambda I have written out here, just to conform to the form of the gamma uh, distribution. right? And so, uh, uh, this is therefore, this is I should have written here gamma, yes, this is gamma s plus t lambda. So, we have uh, concluded that if you take two independent gamma random variables, x is gamma s lambda and y is gamma t lambda, then the sum and they are independent, then the sum will be again gamma distribution uh, having a gamma, gamma distribution with parameters s plus t and lambda. So, so, the same lambda, if the second parameter is the same, then I can go on adding the uh, gamma random variables and the first parameter gets added. Of course, you are adding independent gamma random variables. So, corollary first is that if x 1, x 2, x n are gamma s i lambda and they are independent random variables, then by repeated use as we did earlier, by repeated use of convolution it follows that um, x 1 plus x 2 plus x n will be gamma sigma s i, i varying from 1 to n comma lambda. So, here of course, the this thing is uh, uh, immediate that is you are adding the distribution is not changing, it is just that the parameter is changing and that also the second parameter, the first one that is a common one that remains the same. Right. Now, another corollary, which is that um, uh, if you take x 1, x 2, x n are identically independently distributed exponential lambda random variables. And we know that uh, an exponential lambda, from here only you can see from the gamma p d f, that is a gamma 1 comma lambda. Right, an exponential lambda is gamma 1 comma lambda. And so, when you take x 1 plus, plus x n uh, exponential uh, random variables independently distributed, then this is a gamma n comma lambda, because the first parameter gets added and this. So, uh, x 1 plus and we will see um, uses of all this, when we talk about uh, uh, random processes, stochastic processes, which are Poisson and Markov and so on. Right. So, um, I have tried to um, depict uh, by various, you know, because I want to, you had to, you could not just uh, blindly apply the convolution, you had to make sure that, you know, when you are applying it, your uh, values of the variables should be such that these p d f s are defined and so on. So, we did this. Now, of course, the question is, see, we have defined this for uh, independent random variables. That means, the convolution uh, right now, we the definition says that they are independent and then you take the sum and then you can talk about the convolution. Uh, but, uh, can you uh, answer the um, uh, converse, can you that is if, if you can show that the uh, for two random variables x and y, the uh, distribution function for x plus y can be written as a convolution of the distribution functions of x and y, would it imply that x and y are independent. So, this is the question and I will try to answer through a counter example, uh, to say that no, it may it is not necessary, uh, the, uh, you may get the uh, uh, distribution of the sum by the convolution, but uh, the variables may not be independent. So, this example is, I have taken it from uh, Dodevich and Mishra and as I told you, I have uh, often taken examples uh, and from uh, this book Dodevich and Mishra and Sheldon and Ross and I will give you the references also at the end of the course. So, here and this uh, example is originally due to W T Hall and you will see how cleverly the uh, uh, this construct this has been constructed. So, uh, see uh, as I said the we try to answer the question that if um, the distribution of x plus y is the convolution of the distribution of x and of y does it follow oh okay does it follow that x and y are independent random variables. So, we want to answer this question, because we have defined the convolution for independent random variables. So, um, the table here gives you the joint, um, okay, I should make the at least you to look nice. 
So, this is it. So, therefore, this table gives you the joint uh, uh, probability function, probability mass function of x and y and uh, theta is a fixed number, but it is absolute value less than 1 by 9, because um, otherwise the entries here will become negative. So, we want this to be a valid um, uh, table for uh, joint probability mass function of x and y. right? Okay. And you can see that um, when you add up these, so the marginal p d f s are independent of uh, the pro marginal probability mass functions are independent of theta. And this is where I am saying that the thing has been very well constructed. So, uh, see the, these will 3 will add up to uh, theta, theta will cancel the plus theta and minus theta. So, it will be 1 by 3. Similarly, here this minus theta and plus theta will cancel. So, this will also be 1 by 3 and finally, this is also 1 by 3 and your column sums also give you uh, the marginals, which are all independent of theta. right? And now, you want to write. So, we want to verify that uh, the distribution function of x plus y is a convolution of the distribution functions of um, uh, x and y. So, uh, the values that x plus y will take are minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. Right? These are the possible values that x plus y can take, because your x takes the values minus 1, 0, 1 and y takes the values minus 1, 0, 1. Right? Okay, so, you start with probability x plus y equal to 0 and we will have to verify for all possible values to make sure that this is uh, that x plus y, the distribution of x plus y can be obtained as a convolution of distributions of x and y. So, uh, here uh, by convolution I means uh, I am taking uh, x to be equal to 1, then y will be equal to minus 1. right? And if you take x equal to minus 1, then y will be 1 and if you take x equal to 0, then y will be also 0. So, these are the three, you can convolute here this right? and probability for x equal to 1, 1 by 3, right? that is what we mean by marginal 1 by 3 into probability y equal to minus 1, that is also 1 by 3. So, therefore, this is 1 by 9. Similarly, you can immediately see that probability x equal to minus 1 is 1 by 3 and probability y equal to 1 is also 1 by 3 and 0, 0 also um, uh, x equal to 0 gives you 1 by 3 and y equal to 0 also 1 by 3. So, this is uh, a 1 by 3 right? and then uh, similarly probability x plus y equal to 1. So, here also when you want to fix x and then the corresponding value of y. So, here x, I put x equal to 1, then y will have to be 0 and I put x equal to 0, y is uh, equal to 1 and uh, you should have put, uh, if you put x equal to minus 1, then uh, that is not valid. right? x equal to minus 1, uh, then y can only take a value 0, 1 or minus 1. So, this is, uh, these are the only two ways you can convolute the uh, sum x plus y equal to 1 here and therefore, this probability is 2 by 9. Right. I have tried to compute uh, so just to make sure that see because uh, even if for one single value uh, the convolution does not hold then I cannot uh, say that. And so, for x plus y equal to 2 only one possibility x takes value 1 and y equal to 1. So, th this is also I have taken this example because it uh, shows you that when we write uh, f x of x into f y of uh, t minus x then you see uh, you have to take only possible values of t you cannot just take any. So, x plus y equal to 2 will be uh, given by x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. So, this probability is 1 by 9 and similarly, x plus y equal to minus 2 will be given by x equal to minus 1 and y equal to minus 1. So, that is 1 by 9. Right. So, now we compute these probabilities without convolution. So, for example, probability x plus y equal to 0 uh, will be uh, probability x equal to minus 1, y equal to 1. So, all pairs that make up x plus y equal to 0 plus probability x equal to 1 y equal to minus 1 and plus probability x equal to 0 y equal to 0. Okay. And so, from the table we can see that minus 1 1 x minus 1 and this 1. So, 1 by 9 minus theta right? and then um, 1 minus 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 1 by 9 plus theta and then 0 0 x 0 y 0 that is this which is 1 by 9. right? So, therefore, uh, this adds up to 1 by 3 minus theta and theta cancel out. 
So, this is 3 upon 9, which is 1 by 3. Similarly, x plus y equal to 1. So, x equal to 0, y equal to 1. So, again 0, 1, 1, 0 and so on. So, 0, 1, 0, 1 will be 1 by 9 plus theta, 1, 0 will be 1 by 9 minus theta and that is it, because the sum to be equal to 1, if these are the only two possible pairs of values that x and y can take. So, 1 by 9 plus theta plus 1 by 9 minus theta is 2 by 9. So, this also matches with this and this matches with this. 1 by 3 and then similarly you can see that uh, x plus y equal to 2 will simply be the pair x equal to 1 y equal to 1 which is 1 by 9 x equal to 1 and y equal to 1 1 by 9 which also matches with this one right and then x plus y equal to minus 2 this is x equal to minus 1 and y equal to minus 1 x equal to minus this is 1 by 9 and here also we got it as 1 by 9. Okay. So, uh, uh, we have checked almost for all yes, well not exactly um, may be x plus y equal to minus 1 that is left out, uh, but uh, we have otherwise checked for x plus 0, 1, 2, 2, 2 and minus 2. So, um, that 1 was, but you can easily verify that for all values that means the probability mass function of x plus y matches with the probabilities obtained by convolution for all theta less than or equal to 1 by 9. So, therefore, uh, uh, so the, the two things match, but we know that x and y are not independent. Why? Because you just take one pair. See, I just have to show that for one pair of values uh, th uh, this does not hold that is probability x equal to minus 1 and y equal to 0 uh, that is from the gain from the table is 1 by 9 plus theta, but uh, uh, this is not equal to as uh, sorry uh, yeah what I am saying is that this is not equal to <laughs> probability x equal to minus 1 into probability y equal to 0. So, x equal to minus 1 from the marginals is uh, this 1 by 3 um, and the probability y equal to 0 uh, y equal to 0 uh, this is y equal to 0 uh, is uh, 1 by 3 right. So, uh, that is 1 by 9 and therefore, um, the two are not equal as long as theta is some positive number of course, satisfying the condition that absolute of theta is less than or equal to 1 by 9. So, for any um, for a positive theta satisfying this, these two will not be equal and therefore, x and y will be independent only when theta is 0. So, here is an interesting example and um, it must have taken them lot of time to construct such an example. Now, if you try to do it for uh, when x takes only two different values, x and y take um, two different values, it will not be possible. Then uh, you can think of uh, you know trying a situation where x and y take four values each, then you will have to uh, make sure that uh, you will have to write down these probabilities in such a way that uh, the uh, marginals are independent of uh, theta. right? and then you can have a chance to show that you can construct such an example that the uh, uh, probability mass function of x plus y can be obtained by convolution, but the, the variables x and y are not independent. So, it might be a very interesting project, but I am not sure if it is possible, but uh, here the definitely lot of effort went into it to show that. Uh, convolution does not imply independence all the time. Okay. So, you see um, according to me we have uh, developed enough machinery uh, to uh, be able to now um, show you uh, some more uh, interesting application complex in, uh, in uh, applications of the tools that we have or the machinery that we have developed so far of probability theory and uh, I would like to now devote the rest of the a course on uh, uh, you know stochastic processes or and uh, uh, only a uh, uh, simple basic ones and uh, uh, because otherwise uh, the uh, you know uh, there's a full uh, vast subject on stochastic processes and things can get very complex but so so the first thing would be uh, the first uh, stochastic process that i would like to talk about would be poisson process and the idea here you have, you have already uh, talked of a poison random variable 
And then uh, we have also looked at uh, exponential and gamma random variables, and we will see that how these things get uh, you know we uh, we uh, sort of use uh, the, uh, the different kinds of distributions that we have developed into answering questions. So essentially, the thing is that you know you you have a uh, it is a counting process, and uh, uh, you have a service, let us say post office, uh, railway booking counter. Well, there are still people who go and book at the railway counters, not everybody does it online, it is not, it's not uh, possible for everybody to do it. So, whatever these services are there, now you want to have an estimate as to how many people are coming and what is the, so, and therefore, then accordingly uh, you can design the service, so that people do not have to wait for a long time to be serviced, how many counters should be there and so on. So, these are the kind of things we will be talking about, and so basically we will be defining uh, n t as the number of uh, people who are, who are entering, let us say a post office uh, up to time t. So, we will keep a count uh, and we will measure the number of people, uh, I mean we will count the number of people who enter the post office, uh, say starting from 0 time to time t time, time. And then we will um, uh, I answer a lot of questions depending on that. But then the thing is that, because we are calling it Poisson process. So, this for uh, there will be certain conditions, which will have to be satisfied by uh, you know the, this process, because when you are modeling it, then we have to uh, have some basic conditions, which are met by uh, this particular counting process. And then we will uh, develop the structure and uh, try to answer a few questions. And the other one would be, the other process that we will talk about would be Markov process. And so, they are both interesting, the basic and the, and the we can sort of uh, uh, develop, will answer a lot of questions through these, uh, because we have uh, developed the machinery to do that. So, this would be my, uh, the, uh, you know, next, uh, next few lectures would be on Poisson process and then on Markov processes. Okay. In my last lecture, I had told you that we will now be talking about uh, some stochastic processes. And in fact, uh, so, and one of them is uh, the Poisson process. Uh, this is, uh, you can describe this as a probabilistic model used for describing unpredictable events, right. Because there is a chance element, uh, for example, when an earthquake will happen, or when a certain person walks into a post office, these are all unpredictable events. So, uh, the, the, the Poisson process is a probabilistic model. And certainly, when you uh, model a situation, then there are certain uh, rules or certain, uh, and of course, uh, so the idea here is that uh, you are uh, modeling a situation where the events exhibit a certain amount of statistical regularity, and that of course this means that uh, you know you can you can um, uh, approximate the occurrences by a, a probability density function. So the, the these events they exhibit or approximately exhibit a statistical regularity. And uh, so, essentially uh, the Poisson process is a counting process. So, that means uh, essentially these unpredictable events, they, uh, they get counted by the, the model that we will create here. And then of course, a uh, lot of uh, decisions and a lot of conclusions can be based on uh, the, this counting process. This is what we will see. Uh, in the next couple of lectures. Okay. Now, the examples as I said are number of persons entering a post office or a bank up to time t. So, always the measure that means, when I am saying n t, this is, uh, the, is the time to start counting the events uh, starts at 0 and then up to time t. So, we count the number of events that take place and therefore, like for example, when you are uh, counting the number of persons entering a post office or a bank then this is. So, an event will occur, when a person enters the post office. right? So, therefore, n t will give you the number of people, who have entered the bank or the post office, up to time t, counting from 0, starting time 0, the 0 to t, the number of people, who have entered the bank or the post office. Uh, other examples could be, number of children born in a town or a village, up to t days or t months whichever uh, this uh, you know time period you want to fix the time framework is decided and then you start the counting process and of course in this case event will occur when a child is born right so you keep counting these events now number of goals hit by a hockey player up to time t so when the match starts and then after that up to time t maybe this could be the half time or whatever it is then 
you, uh, you identify a particular hockey player in the team and then you say number of goals hit by a hockey player up to time t and here again the event will occur when a goal is hit by this particular player right because you're counting the number of goals hit by a particular hockey player so this uh, situation then for example also you can have uh, if you want to uh, pick up a country or a place uh, where a volcano is and then you want to um, find out uh, the number of times a volcano erupts. So, here of course, your time span may be um, maybe 5 years or 10 years and then you may, uh, because volcanoes luckily do not erupt very often. So, therefore, uh, you would, uh, your time span would be uh, much more than for these particular events. So, now through these examples, we realize that whatever our counting process is and this n t must satisfy the following. So, since um, uh, it has to be 0, because when uh, this uh, counts the number of events that have taken place. So, obviously, this has to be 0 uh, positive. Then uh, n t is integer valued, because we are counting the number of events. And then um, for s less than t, your n s must be less than or equal to n t. So, either uh, no event occurs in the interval this, or some event occurs after uh, s time s. So, therefore, n s must be less than or equal to n t. So, this um, number, this uh, counting process, this satisfies this condition. Then, um, for s less than t, your, if you take the difference as, so 3 and 4 are, uh, you can, can be club together also. n t minus n s is equal, uh, equals the number of event, events that occur in time interval s comma t. So, here of course, n s the uh, you know you have counted the events up to time s. So, after s you start counting the events that take place up to t. So, this will be open at this end, this interval time interval and closed at uh, this end. So, s comma t. So, therefore, this is this. Now, uh, other things that we want to impose, because remember we are thinking of uh, modeling uh, this uh, situation, where we want to count the number of events that take place, but uh, certain uh, conditions will have to be met. Mm -hmm.